how much are you paying now? <laughs> he knows it. Mary is asking me. Mm. And he said, no, I'm paying like six thou, six thou five. Uh, ah, you'll pay seven. The problem is, mm. there's a problem. With the rescission, a lot of people are not able to save with the balloon. My biggest worry, though, is that we are not stopping uh, this residual. And it speaks to what we spoke about last time. We just want to look nice, man. Let me tell you who's coming next. Kedley Shegi Jacob Zuma, former president of this country. King King David Studio Podcast. Today on the show, uh, we're talking, um, what did we say again? King Balloon payment. Yes. There's a lot of balloons out in the streets of South Africa. You call them your cars. But I can tell you now, they're financed in ways that are pretty tricky. Mm. And I don't know how tricky it is. We'll break it down with someone who actually knows uh, the story better than, than I do. Uh, because when we get into these things, it answers the, some of the things that she told us in, a, in, a, in the episode before, where she said, if you don't have a vision, you might end up in trouble because you're trying to impress people who are not even interested in the life that you're trying to live. Mm -hmm. Just bear with me. I have to read this properly. Uh, an award-winning uh, author of a book. Where's that book? Uh, Money Bucket Holes. That's what it's called. Please check it out. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, the things you learn in here, they're just incredible. Also a fin financial and credit repair coach, a dead expert, founder of Good Life Money Mastery. Ahaitsu, put your hands together. For You're going to multiply us here, eh? How are you, ma'am? I'm well. I'm well, King David. Thank you for having me here. It's exciting to uh, have a chat with you because I walk away thinking of possibilities and of mistakes, of past mistakes, yeah. of errors that I could have made and I shouldn't have. Mm. But I like what you said last time. You said, if I'm still here, it means I still have a chance. And I, I believe it. Let's let's go straight into it. <laughs> King David. Um mm. Okay. Morolo. Oh. <laughs> hey. King David Hawitz. Yo. Kimokatla. <laughs> pilani. Mm. 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 <laughs> wow, man. You say it with such pride and joy. It's yeah. actually quite amazing. They say, no way you come from. Yeah. That is so true, eh? Jeez, that was so heartwarming. It made me feel like it was like we see low and that's funny. What's it like? We did next. We did next. Ah, I guess we had so much of it. Like two hours ago, past one. Top one, I'm on top. We're cold. We're ready. We're ready. We're ready. We're ready. The short guy Ropa. Let me tell you. Sure, 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 sure. I don't even doubt the guy Ropa. And someone is going to correct me, and I'll be so ashamed. So just know for the record. I know. <laughs> Why born? Mm. I want us to talk about balloon payment. Last time we touched on so many different things to do with, with the mistakes we made, with the, the habits that we have as people, particularly debt related. Because when I was that you you know them so well. Tell us about balloon payment in simple terms for some of us to understand. What is that? Uh, balloon payments, uh, mostly in South Africa. They use it for car financing, mm. not necessarily much on the home financing like other countries. Yeah. What basically happens in the layman's wo uh, word is that instead of paying deposit upfront, mm. what's the, your, your car financing, then you've got an opportunity to pay a certain lump sum towards the end of your financing. 
Mm. Most of these um, giveaways are the ones that says, buy this car, no deposit. Or, or buy uh, get the car, start paying in Jan. Yes. Yeah, buy rata car, come on, end of the year. Exactly. So what then happens is, let me maybe start with what the normal car finance would go about. Mm. Typically, they would require 10% or 20% mm. of, of the deposit. The price of the car, of yes. The price of the car. So if you are buying 200,000 a car, then they'll say pay 20,000 20, upfront. Mm -hmm. Yes. So this 20% would now go towards reducing your your, your balance your, first. And your monthly repayments. Yes. Yeah. And then um, after the end of the repayment period, you take your car, you've got your papers. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no other stories. I like how you say you have, you, you got your papers because while you're paying for the car, the papers are not with you. The car is not yours. It's not yours. The papers are with the bank or whoever that's yes. financing your car. That paper, they call it Natis, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, that's the one, yes. They will say, yes, David Mashabella, but the, the, I think the owner, mm. APSA Bank or whatever bank it that's is. That's it, yeah. So now the credit market or the bank industry says, you know what, there are people who might not have deposit to buy the property the um, the car yeah or the vehicle which is a lot of people a lot of them yeah. saving is an issue people would want to buy that car right away mm. so waiting is an issue <laughs> so then let's create a program a, a, a financing a different financing where you say you get the car right now provided you qualify um, in terms of credit mm. uh, uh, agreement, you don't pay anything, you get a car. So now for the very same car of 200000 they would say, let's say 20% of that uh, 200000 uh, let Maybe we can just say 10% if I may just put that to, to make things simple, but it's usually a higher, 30% or so. Yes. But for, for, for simplicity, let's just say 10%. So now they will finance you for hundred and ninety thousand. Mm -hmm. The ten percent is ten thousand. Ten percent is ekukule kule kwa. Ekukule. Kuma fello. Kuma fello. Yes. They will finance you for five years or whatever years mm. it is, and then you would still pay interest rate. You pay interest rate. Mm. That's where the trick is. You pay interest rate. For the 200k. Okay, pause. One step back. I am buying a car, 200,000 rands. Yes. Here it is. Uh, 10%, I don't have deposit. Yes. I go to the bank, I say, I love this car. I they want it now. I want, yes, yes. They mm. say, bring your, your, your pay sleep and all mm. of that. Let's mm. check if you're qualified. Yes. They check. Ah, hundred percent. They call you, <laughs> and I'm excited. Uh, this is best news. I even tell the wife, "Hey, yes. that Range Rover yes, is coming. <laughs> Range Rover is coming." <laughs> and now, two hundred thousand rands. Barry, deposit dololo. Accept. Mary you can still get the car. Here's an option. It's a balloon payment option. They don't even call it a residual. Yes. It sounds all like, yeah, the are you taking a residual? Uh, residual is the common name here in South Africa. Exactly. In most, uh, most cases, they say they didn't know. Yes. They didn't tell me. No, I hear that a lot. Trust me, I've heard it this past week. from <laughs> Someone said, I didn't know it was balloon payment. Yes. So so now they say a portion of this, I will remove it. Mm. from the monthly payments for the next five years. Say, we'll remove it. Mm. So we'll remove, I, I, I simplify, I just have any percentage, I have any amount. We'll remove 50,000 rands from yes. the 200. Yes. It'll go to the end. Mm. Now, I'm only paying monthly payments on 150. Is that the story? Not necessarily. Okay. Yes, you're paying the, the the premium is calculated on the hundred and fifty thousand. Yes. But the interest is paid for two hundred thousand. So, so that's why it's a fail. Yes. 
<laughs> because now there is no bank that will give you money without any interest. Of course. So this 50,000 would still have compound interest. Mm, for them. But you are paying that interest while you th- through through your throughout your 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 repayment period for mm. that 5 years. <laughs> so <laughs> it's not just chunked away and it's nicely tucked somewhere without compound interest. We'll see it later. You're paying interest what is perceived to be a cash flow. Mm. To many people because they would they think they believe that uh you would pay lesser installment, no deposit. Mm. It's ticked as one of the the, the advantages there in it's the market. Great deal field. though. No deposit, you've paying lesser installment, mm. and then you only pay that fifty thousand. But what they do not understand is that even though the calculations on hundred and fifty thousand, which is was, a monthly payment, is a monthly payment, yeah. which would ideally be lower than paying for two hundred thousand. Yes, but the interest rate is for two hundred thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Because 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 the car is worth two hundred thousand. Yes, the yeah. car is worth two hundred thousand. So now you would pay that for five five years, then come a time when you need to, to pay the balance. Mm-hmm. The fifty thousand. Fifty thousand. I get it now. I'm thinking I'm done. I, yes. I've been paying this for five years. Yes. I'm thinking I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> and then nobody. Uh. Uh-uh. Fifty k. And. If you cannot pay that 50000 they take the car. But I don't pay it all in full, do I? In most cases, the agreement is that you need to pay it full. Like once off payment? Once off payment. How is that even possible? I'm the same guy. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's changed about my life. <laughs> ah, to them, I'm the same guy that didn't have money to buy this car. That is when now it becomes a problem. Because if you buy, if you were... If you are not able to save enough money to put down the deposit, which would, one, give you a better lending terms, better interest rate, I mean. Two, the interest rate is going to be for two, I mean, for 150000 Yes. Because you paid fifty. It's, it's cheaper. It's cheaper. Yeah. They are not financing... 200k now. You're financing 150. You paying interest rate for 150k. After the repayment, there's no manga manga. There's nothing that is still holding you back to the the the, the, the repayment. Now, when you do the residual um in, in, in purchasing agreement, yeah. it's good for people who are saying. At the moment, I do not have financial means. But in the near future, I anticipate or I foresee having a lump sum of money. Mm -hmm. But it's always a... It's always a a problem. (laughs) Yeah. It's not guaranteed, but it works better for people like that. Mm. And I would advise those people that if, let's say, third year, unless you've got ultimate, ultimate financial goals if for the third year you f- you realize you've got this 50,000 that you know is hanging mm. rather don't pay it off if you want to keep this car yes don't pay it on the third year or whatever take that 50,000 invest it somewhere ah. let it earn compound interest when now the end Mm. The, the the payment period comes to an end. You have it and... You probably have, what, 55, 65K. That's it. You've got interest. But, you earned interest. But the interest you earn is not likely to beat the interest I'm being charged. Yes, you need to find a good um, investment vehicle. Mm. But it's better than nothing um, because um, at some point you're earning something out of that. Yeah. Is, is, is better than nothing just taking putting um 50 or, or taking 50k as it is 
So you don't have pressure to pay in this five years if you still if you want to keep this car for life. So rather um take that 50k, invest it in a vehicle that is at least have a higher interest return, and then towards the end of this payment period, then you have more than fifty thousand to pay towards it. The problem is mm. there's a problem with the residual. A lot of people are not able to save for the balloon. For that 50K. Because it is sold as a package that will inject cash flow into your finances by not paying higher installment. But ideally, you still have to save. For the 50,000 at the end. For the 50K. Can't you make arrangements where the 50K is paid the same way I paid the hundred and fifty in in trenches, like I did, got three thousand five hundred every month. It depends on the bank. Yeah, it's not guaranteed. It depends on the bank, and you need to come with substantial, um, I don't know, motivation. reasons for it. Yes. One thing that I want to make you aware of is that there's what we call break even point mm. for for the bank. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Comes a time where Probably upon the repayment period, mm. when it ends, the bank is going to look at whether this value of the pro of this car can break even. Meaning the value, the the retail value mm. of selling this car is does it match the amount that is still owed to the bank? The car that I've been driving for three years, whether it has lost value. Is that what it is? Yes. And very often it's not likely to be like that because I've been driving this car. And most of these new cars, they lose value like that. Very quickly. Yeah, the fancy ones. Especially yes. the fancy ones. Unlike before, you know, it, 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 it was a little bit of a nicer story way back. But these days, because they're introducing new models every all now. All the time. And all the time. Yes. So they lose value very, very quickly. So the break even point, they will look at it. Hmm. And it's one of the things that will, they would consider on refinancing the 50K. Ah, Jorge, there's still value in this car. There's so still it's value it's in this car and, and so they'll use their own internal merits mm. to look at it. And they should also, they'll also, it's another credit. It's like yes, applying for credit. For, for credit, yeah. So <laughs> if you are... Um, in over indebted and they may not approve it. They might not approve it, but the thing is, um, you, most people who would say I didn't know about it, they would look forward to now having an extra income because they would think they've settled the car. Mm. Maybe they've released now four point five, five point five, seven thousand, whatever. They are looking forward to now enjoying this amount of money and having having their papers for <laughs> for the car, whereas it's not. So it becomes a tricky part. Queen David, it's even worse when when there is a default on the repayment. The 150. The 150. Yes. You're not even touching the 50. We're not there yet. We're on year three. Yes. Yeah. Now the client has said, it thinks of selling or disposing the the the, the that, that was my question. There's no way you like this car for five years. Exactly. Not possible. And you need to and even if you sell it after three years, you are you're defaulting. Atlanta is defaulting and um they're in areas um the bank needs to repossess the car mm. whichever <laughs> way it is. Um it might be difficult to sell this this car hmm. privately. Yes, that remember too. the break even point, and also the fact that there's still fifty k hanging on this. Let's let's go back to that. Cause I want you to clarify it better. Uh, One hundred and fifty thousand. I've been paying. I've been paying. I'm now owing seventy thousand. Yeah, with the bank. Yes. But I still have the 50,000 yes. that's waiting for me later yes. on that I don't think about because I want. I want to sell the car. And uh, I go to We Buy Cars, for example. They look at it and say, yeah, we can give you 40,000. 
So already it doesn't break even. It does not break even. The break even is 120. Because there's 50,000 still. There's 50k. Just as. <laughs> so you see now the difference between this scenario and the scenario where you've paid a deposit mm. towards the car where now should you find yourself over indebted along the way you it's like you injected equity into the into the transaction yes, even though it's a depreciating asset, asset yeah but it's not all scrapped out in terms of equity yeah you probably now be left with um say you paid 20% you paid 20,000 rands yes. uh, and you've covered almost 100,000 rands of the 200 over the past 3 years so it's 100 plus 20 is 120 you're left with 80 yes. it's not so bad it's not so bad you can sell it and break even in part without you know you can get a good buy privately so absolutely um even if you make a loss it's yes. like 5,000 it's not as it's, bad as it's not as bad as that and if the for unfortunate situations the the bank gets to repossess the car on residual yes the shortfall is <gasps> high explain this i can't pay it i'm on year 3 i've paid 100000 rands i'm left with 50 plus 50 eh uh, and i struggle to pay this 150 like i'm struggling with the last leg it's really sad and then the the bank now says they do the right thing they get a, a share sure. of the court they follow the right procedure i would like to think banks do that i would like to honestly think they follow the, the <laughs> law in this regard they get the sheriff the sheriff is in front of me i on grey like jiming what jibi i say na da are you david carries yeah. you have been saved comrade we want the car yes and i read and i ask those questions are you a sheriff <laughs> <laughs> he says yes i am <laughs> so now what happens in that case because i'm owing 50 plus 50 is 100 now mm. if we are to find that the, it's it's um the it does not even work out with the break even usually the cars are repossessed after repos are auctioned after repossession mm. what most people do not know is that you have a right the uh, to say to the collectors who, or the banks you need to sell you need to get a good pricing for well, my car, car. Yes. they cannot sell um in a, a a car that owes 100,000 uh for 20k yes you know but a lot of people don't take no, this we don't know you have a right to to have your car sell sold closer to the retail value because they're selling it the retail uh, retail they're yeah. selling it on your behalf or mm. well on their behalf as well because they yes. want to they want to recoup their money yes. from a debt that you're struggling to yes. pay yes. so they they take the car here it is now it's with them you've accepted or more mm. and and now you're saying you have a right to say don't just sell this thing anywhere willy nilly you have the right to say i would not accept the car it is n- it's it's not it's it's unlawful for you to sell my car for 20k mm when the retail value is 60000 uh, i mean 80 Eight hundred thousand. Yeah, you know, there's such a big gap, you know. But most, in most cases, like I mentioned, the the the, the break even point, they would sell it. They should sell it at least from break even point and higher. But, but it's a car but, that has lost so much value. Yes. You went to all these nice places with it <laughs> and it's just broken. It's a horrible car. You didn't look after it. Ex- those that also that also um play a role. Mm. How well you've taken care of your car and and all that. So they rep- they repossess <clears throat> and then they auction. Yes. Whatever that is left, it's still on your bill. Okay. Let's use numbers. 100,000 I'm owing 50 50. Mm. Uh they auction the car for 80,000. Say I'm lucky. Say I looked after it. Yes. Still in a decent condition. Yeah. They auction the car off for 80,000 rands. I'm owing 20. Yes. Uh they help me 
with the 80. Mm. Now I'm kind of closer to getting out of the problem. Yeah. But the 20 is still a burden of mine. Yes. Is that what you say? Yes. Hmm. It's, they call it a short fall. So I'm not out of the <laughs> You're not out of it. Um, ideally, what they need to do is from that 20,000, it can be now converted into an unsecured debt because the asset has been released. It's not secured debt. Mm -hmm. The asset has been released. That becomes an unsecured debt. Then you can have an agreement on how to pay it forward. Ah. But then it's a great thing. I have assisted a lot of clients whose cars were repossessed many years ago, over three years ago. And since the repossession or shortly after the, the auctioning, they did not pay this amount for over three years. The shortfall. The shortfall. Yeah. There was no communication between him and the bank hmm. or the collector for three years. It sounds like the bank was... Somehow on forgot, the job. yes. Yeah. There are a lot of these cases. Really? Yes. Why is that? Is that because the banker got something? So it's no longer that... I think in previous money years, money. the collection energy or, or, or enforcement was not much like it is ah, now. Ah, okay. Remember now, it, it's very easy to trace a person before mm. even the cell phones and lines. Yes, you okay. Know. I got it. So... And the other thing is the banks, for them not to pay a lot of tax, they would claim it as a loss. Okay, yes. And now I'm tapping to accounting. Mm -hmm. They would claim it as a loss on the accounting books yeah. so that they don't pay a lot of tax to SARS. Of course. And then they would hand over this loss as a book, mm. that book to the collectors. So sometimes they would not really do that in force at the mm. time. Mm. Only now. Are they aggressive now? Yes. Yeah. Only now they're aggressive. I'm actually doing a, a campaign on uh, cancelling all debts, mm. prescribed debts. Only now they call you. So your car was repossessed like 2014, 2015. Sure. Now they call in 2020 or 2020. They say they want their 20,000. They want their 20,000. <laughs> I'll call I'll cancel it. Yes. So how do you cancel a situation like that then? Because it sounds the law. The law is there. What does the law say? There are two laws that mm. we use. Okay. The first law of Prescription Act, 68 of 1969. It says, three years have passed. Remember now this debt is unsecured now. It's no longer secured. It's no longer attached to the car. Yes. It's it's a debt it's, between me and the bank. You know, it's finally low, no That's it, credit yes. Repairs. Absolutely. Yes. I mean, credit card. So, no communication after three years, mm. meaning no acknowledgement of debt, no payment for three, for more than three years, mm. no legal action taken. And legal action, we're not talking about letter of demand. We're talking about summons and judgment. Okay. When it's now serious. <laughs> three things. Yeah. And no court, no court order if you are under debt review. Four things. Hmm. So if this thing don't exist, I cancel it. <laughs> I cancel it. And if they trick you after three years, and what that they say, like yes. David, what that they yes. say, like yes, okay, fine, I'll they pay you. They called me and. Just to they get called me. Here, I'm scared now. Hey, boy, bring another law. <laughs> Which one is that? <laughs> <laughs> As registered with uh, NCR, mm. the NCR Act of um, 2005, Section 126B, yeah. it says it's unlawful for them to call you after three years. If, every, if all these things happened and then they call you, mm. It's unlawful. There's a phrase where mulato wuli so o wabola o wabola. We're dead uh, if nothing yes. happens. Agree. That phrase is tenga kono baizor. We don't know our right. Yes. Yes. 
wabola umla 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 to umla to wabola umla 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 They have been trying to reach reach you. It's them that they need to prove to me. Kore, we've been trying. You've been ignoring us. That this account tiable, it's not prescribed. If they cannot prove that, I we cancel it and update it at the credit bureau. How severe is the crisis here balloon payment in South Africa? Three in five. Jar. <laughs> that's a terrible. Finance. That's a terrible Finance. ratio. And It's just that I cannot mention brands. There are certain brands of cars that focus primarily on that. No, wait. This is a free platform. No, I don't think I should. <laughs> Who will be upset? It's a free country. Um, <laughs> is it a German car? Yes. Ah, there are very few. Don't worry. <laughs> We can decode <laughs> either this one or that one. Yes, so it's fine. Yes, yes. So <laughs> I can are, guess. Though. Your, your typical financing is around that. And that's a lot of people, particularly black people, fell for those kind of cars. You see a lot of them in the road. Fell for those cars. And they are stuck now with the repayments yeah. of the residuals. What is the worst case scenario What do you what something that you've come across because I think we've cre we've, we've we've demonstrated a terrible scenario already of this mm. guy with 50 and 50 years of failing mm. what is the worst case scenario that you've come across where ah bon you're in trouble you're owing the bank 500,000 rands balloon and you're stuck with this debt and yes. this car is gone yes um I think what is said to me is because I know I can cancel debt unsecured debts of shortfalls from repossessed cars. What pains me is when I realize that the client not knowing their rights, mm. they, they interrupted their oh. prescription unknowingly. By doing what? Answering the calls. <laughs> so, <laughs> don't know. you know, yes, <laughs> the, 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 as I'm saying, unknowingly. <laughs> yes. So, So every year they call, you make arrangements, you default on that arrangement and then whatever, go separate ways, you mm, know, it's mm. like I'm jolo. Yeah, every year it's a reunion. Jolo was colored. You and the collector, your ambition. So it's really sad because I know if this person did not Go on that date when I said, hey, yes. let's hang out. Let's hang out. The debt collector saying, let's hang out. And then you're rubbing shoulders and, and promising each other heaven and earth. Don't worry, we'll fix this. We'll fix this. So, I, because I know that after three years, whether it is 20K or 500K of that car, I can cancel it. It, it brings pain to my heart. David. Ma Mari, to be fair to the bank, they've made an effort to try to reach you and you ignored their calls. But remember, they claim their loss. They still claim a loss they and they still get a loss. It yes. us. They didn't pay tax on this thing. Yes, over all this time. Yes. Horuika, it's a bad debt. We can't find that person. We've moved on. Yes. So I'm not saying the banks are not should not follow through the days and everything. But what I'm saying is if comes a time or a, a situation where a consumer can exercise his rights or her rights according to the South African law, yeah, I come in. And you take out the law book. Yeah, I pull in the law book and <laughs> say, hey, by the way. Jeez. You know. I don't care which collector is it. I don't. I don't care which. They're collector. all the same to you. They're all the same. I approach them the same and say, "This is what the law says, and um, we're helping our clients to exercise their rights. You have no right." Mm. <laughs> and when we are done, we then updated the credit bureau. Yes. Credit bureau. This is the situation. 
update this information. Sure. Does it apply the same whether you're, it's a company that bought or it's an individual? Are the, are the it, it depends on the credit agreement. Yeah. If it falls within the credit agreement as per the NCA Act, mm. whether it's for the company or for an individual. Yes. It doesn't it's really It's all the mean. same. All, yeah. all the same because at the end of the day, they are regulated by the same act. Yes. Yeah. So, um, it, 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 because it's an agreement between the businesses and entities the, the, mm. and the and the creditor, which 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 will in this case be the bank. We find ourselves in the world of residual. Is it only cars that are sold this way? In other countries, especially in USA, they do it also for the bonds. Hmm, property. In properties. Oh, um, I'm going to pay for 40 years most. You see? Yeah. So from South Africa, it's mostly common for vehicle financing, mm -hmm. not so much on the bond. According to me, I don't know any other um, kind of agreements mm. um, that would have residuals unless if it's a business deal no it's yeah, something else, something it else. Outside and it's, it's a, probably a, a deal it's not common practice yes. it's just these two people yes. who have that agreement yes. they yeah. call it contractual agreements and all that so under the credit agreement what is common is under the 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 the, the vehicle finance mm. Mm. and and you said <laughs> out of five cars Three that we see on the road is a high chance they are <laughs> residual cars. Yes, look at the marketing. A lot of marketing they say is no like deposit. That. Yes. The no minute deposit. they say no deposit. Ah, you must know. It's residual. It's residual. Hey, there you go. Now you know. Yes. Even if you didn't hear the word residual. Because <laughs> it's possible they could sell you and you didn't hear that word. A lot of things are not mentioned. Remember, you're so excited. You got approved. You're looking at it in the car dealer's. Uh, showroom. You get inside. It's there. There's a smell. You know, new cars have a smell. You've got that smell. <laughs> Remember the first time yeah. I, I, I I actually bought my, my car? There's this smell. There's this thing. They say sign here. You just sign. And well, I never, unfortunately, I never bought a car on residual. But what I'm saying is, I imagine the same. The moment. The moment. Yeah. The moment. And that's how most of this uh, residual. Um, car finance would go about mm. people not knowing but we also have a um, responsibility to read between the lines uh, the terms because the NCA Act mm. says you have a right before you, are, uh, you, you enter into a credit agreement you have a right to have this credit agreement explained to you in detail, detail yeah. more so in the language that you understand. However, we do you think we are equipped enough to understand those technicalities? I'm just a random guy. Here's this beautiful Mini Cooper. I like it. And I say, I have a right. Explain. They're explaining. Like we just did now. We're yes. trying to break down residual. Mm. But I don't quite get it. They need to Explain it in a manner that you would understand. You must that's walk away they, having understood it. Yes, that's why NCR emphasized that it should also be in the language that you understand. Yeah. So if you don't understand English, <laughs> this salesperson <laughs> must get someone who can speak Zulu or Sotswana mm. to come and explain to you this agreement before you sign. Can I say, now the law comes in again, mm. much later when I'm struggling to pay this thing that, I didn't understand it. It was not clearly explained to me. Now we're tapping into the CPA Act. And it gets messy now. <laughs> it gets messy now. Yeah. And it's very difficult with um with 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 um with cars. Mm. Very tricky. But we have a right to retain goods that are bought within a specific period of time i think seven days they call it cooling off time okay um with properties it is there but it goes with the amount yes of the the value of the house the what you paid yes. yes yes so with with financing is very very tricky you need to have a really good 
attorney to, to get yourself out of that deal. You need to really come up with a reason why. You didn't understand. Because um, I'm saying, I don't remember hearing this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I was there. Uh, were you there when you were yeah, getting the car? Said, I was why there. Why did you sign if you don't understand? D they didn't spend enough time. They told me <laughs> that I'm getting the car and it's a nice car and I don't pay a lot. Mm. And I'm telling you, I bet you there's a transaction like there that. Are lot, there are a lot. There are lot of people like that. One of the car reposition matter that I came to my to 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 our, to our table three weeks ago. The the guy bought a second hand taxi from a dealer, and it came up with it came with the warranty to be fixed. I think it's one year, six months, 18 months warranty. If it gives you a problem, we will take care of it. Apparently, the taxi had an engine problem. You. Now, the, the, the guy needed to fix the engine. Mm. Remember, taxi is an income-generating vehicle. That's it, yeah. So he, he tried to get the car fixed through this. Uh, guys, mm. they were just giving him a run around. Then he fixed it on his own because now he needs an to elephant in, on his absolutely. On his he needs to make money. He needs to make money. Yeah. By virtue of that, he was unable to keep up with the repayments mm, because it wasn't making money. Mm -hmm. And then this issue again with COVID lockdowns yeah. and all that. Yeah. So. With that mixed up, he ended up defaulting. He <laughs> ended up defaulting and he came to, he had me talking on one of the radio stations mm -hmm. and took my details and, and got to, to, to contact me. And one, I had to focus on stopping the repossession. Okay. That's the, the first. That's the first thing. They're coming. They're coming. Yeah. With the collector. Secondly, I it his it was even unfortunate because the summons were already issued. So when he called me, he had the summons. He, he received the summons two days. Mm -hmm. So I had to stop the repossession. Yeah. And then start interacting with the attorneys, trying to have out of court kind of a settlement agreement. conversation. Are we? Yes. Yeah. But he needed to come up with a good plan. Because he still owes the he car. He still owes the car. Yeah. So he came up with a good plan to say, okay, I'll pay this amount of money, which is in the normal installment, plus this amount of money to curb the areas. Mm. Then I take it now with the attorneys, the ones that issued the summons. The summons. Yeah. It's not guaranteed. They have a right to say no. And if they say no, then you challenge it through court to say, I'm defending this. Now. Yes. Now you have to go through the court and say, magistrate, this is my side of story. I tried to negotiate. This is the situation mm. with the engine, blah, 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 blah. I couldn't make a living. I tried to talk to the bank. They did not want to listen. And then the magistrate should rule out. King David... NCA Act, is a, we call it an act of good faith. Mm. It says, I, let's cooperate here. Yes. Yeah, let's the be intention. kind people to yes. each other. In yeah. our industry, we call it an act of good faith. Mm. We, we need to find a workable mm. situation. And sometimes the courts are the only last option for consumers. Yeah. It's unfortunate it comes with the high cost. Of the legal... Of course, getting attorneys and advocates, yes. it's very expensive. But if everybody was really playing along, we would not even have a lot of courts issues. Yeah. And have a playground on a good faith. There's always someone who's being unfair. <laughs> in any scenario, yes. there's always someone who's being unfair. Yes. When That's people end up in court, there's always someone who's being unfair and they know it. Or doesn't want to listen or whatever. Yeah, you're there's, right. there's always someone right. who's stubborn. They mm. like name and apatale da man. Weibon? Yes. So the magistrate at least would have, that is the only time that the consumer would have a chance to plead their own side of story. Mm. Because when the bank comes 
with the reposition activities, most of them they don't listen. No. Debt collectors are not paid to listen to you. Yes. <laughs> no. It's not their job. Yeah, no, they're, they're, they're here to collect. They're here to, for commissions, business for them. Of course, of course. You know, and that those very 0 0.0011. <laughs> Who will say? Who would like to come up with a walkable situation? They would probably have a, another agreement with the bank to say, if I don't repossess, you still pay me for coming up with the negotiation. Ah, okay. You know, so, I, like we got something. We got something. Yes. One. Yes. yes. Okay. Wow. What an interesting world that, eh? Hey? It is. My biggest worry, though, is that we are not stopping uh, this residual. And it speaks to what we spoke about last time. We just want to look nice, man. Yeah. I want to drive. It, it's not entirely a wrong thing. No. But it's good if you know in the near future, you can come up with a lump sum of money. You have a means to save. But let's be you fair. You need to be financially disciplined. Let's be honest here. Which is far from reality. <laughs> no, like I don't even see it. I really don't see it. Yes. That I bought a car for 200,000 rands. I am paying every month. 50,000 of that is put aside. I'm paying 150, 150, 150. I paid and I paid off five years. Bah! What are the chances I suddenly have 50,000 rands lying around? <laughs> You're not even prepared for it. And note, in this very bad uh, 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 example we're putting up, we don't even count for interest. But you get what I mean. Yes. It, but the interest we've already paid while we were paying the hundred. Of course, yes. It's in. It's worked into that. That's why it, it, it's... What are the chances? Like, really? You're watching this right now. Mm. You are paying residual. It's ending in three years, two years. And you know, go back to your contract and go check it again. Mm -hmm. There's a lump sum there of 150,000 because I know you're driving a BMW 325 yes. Yes. or 326, whatever they call it. Or 320D, I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> you're driving it and you know there's a, there's a, it's a balloon transaction. It's residual. And by the time you're done with the base payment, I don't know what they, I'm probably using the wrong terminology, mm -hmm. of 450,000 rands, I'm still left with 100,000 or 150. Yes. What are the chances that I have that money? Like, where would I have gotten that money all of a sudden? And what are the chances that you would qualify to be refinanced on that amount? Because you need to be refinanced. It's, it's, a, it's, it's another credit application on its own. It's like overdraft. They may, The bank will tell you, I want to take this check account mm, there's a for overdraft, overdraft facility overdraft is a credit agreement on its own yes it, it's carries, not given. it, it carries interest it carries interest in, and sometimes they can decline you now here's me I bought that 325 or 320D mm. and I've paid 450,000 now let's go back to the simple example of 150 yes. 200 yes. I've paid 150 no 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 I've paid 100 I don't like this guy anymore there's a new one. There's a new PM. There's always a new one. Mm. <laughs> there's a new one with bigger nose. The nose are much bigger. <laughs> <laughs> the nose is bigger yeah, now. It's it's <laughs> it used to be like this. Now it's like this. You know, <laughs> you know that nose. Yes. It's bigger and yes. it's nice, man. Mm. I call the the sales guy because mm. I made friends with him when I was buying the car. Because yes. you, know, you know, I'm a friendly guy. Keep Contact. Yes, me. I'm a friendly guy. And, and he always checks on me because mm. they're very good at checking on you. He always checks on me, Antoine Ukrant, you know. Mm, you know, you want a new one? He, he, no, 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 no. This is how it goes. I saw your car, man, parked Goopy Goopy because he knows the car. He yes. sold it. Yes. I saw, oh, yeah, and because you know you go around that area, yes. there's a big chance he saw you. He saw the car. But closer to where you're staying anyway. Exactly. So it's a you hood. Know, it's a hood. Absolutely. He says, I saw your car. Yeah, no, no, I was there, man. Sure, 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 Antoine. Do you know there's a new car? Uh, which one? No, haven't you seen them? Big nose. <laughs> <laughs> and he say, uh, you realize. Do you want to come here and check it out? <laughs> yes. You go. Because it's nice to stay. But well, no, you don't know. Buying a car is nice. Yes. You go there and you see it and you like it. Oh, uh, Did you know that we can take this one of yours? Shall I calculate? I have a finance calculator. Yeah. 
Cut, cut, like a big financial calculator. Cut, 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 cut. Those ones, <laughs> didn't let time value of money. How sharp are you? And then he, then he gives you an amount. Ari, that money that you're owing, plus, 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 I will pay. How much are you paying now? <laughs> he knows it, Mary's asking you. Mm. And you say, no, I'm paying like six thou, six thou five. Uh, ah, you'll pay seven. Tell me, what, what's happening there? What, what's going on there? It's a bit of a, a a lengthy and tricky one, but basically what they do is they take that residual of the one. The 50 that I'm... 50, yes. Mm. Combine it with the one, they check the break even, how much they would get when they sell this, this one, one. trade in and value. Because sometimes they, when some of these cars, when they sell it brand new, mm. they will also tell you about the trade in of course trade in value trade it, in, trade in value. value it it retains its trade in value yeah it's something yes. of that sort yeah. i don't even get it <laughs> and then what happens is when they take now this refinancing of trade mm. trade in and the likes just to grip it in the same thing basically basically they they just just embedding it and then breaking it down again it ballooning it <laughs> breaking it down breaking again. it again just on the higher level and higher amount. And now you find that that 200,000, 100 paid. I'm left with 100, 50 is balloon, 50 I'm about to finish. There's a new car. They take this 100. Now the balloon is no longer 50k. It's, it's bigger. probably 80 or 100. 100 or 200 because I'm buying in big nose. Yes. Now it's a trap. Where <laughs> And I these days. People want to change cars every three years or so because now there's this thing called maintenance and Ma yes, yes, they, of course. You, you, they don't yeah, want to no. Keep a car for a longer time, maintenance. Yeah, of course. So every it's, year it's a, it's like a ritual. Every year you must change a car and they <laughs> know go high you are Eastern Cape or yeah, we have Mavi Cape. Mavi Cape <laughs> or wherever every year they know how you come with a new car <laughs> Dude, I'm you thinking. don't get stuck driving the same car for like seven years like so you know like some people I'm thinking about us mm. and I'm thinking we are in trouble deep one I'm thinking where we're going is very far. It's going to be tricky to get out of this mindset. We have to agree first that it's a mindset, it's a first and foremost. It's a hole created in the money bucket, but it's an internal one. Yeah, and I want to live a good life, man. I'm saying I have 80 years of life. The first 20 wasted at school i have nothing i own nothing nobody knows i don't nobody cares for me first 20 years of life yeah the next 20 it's exciting i got a thing yeah, i got a job a lot of things happening vibey stuff yeah you know that's why i make these funny mistakes i made a child yeah <laughs> you know, I have all those yeah and many of us have done that yes and i find my finances i bought this i should have i should i didn't but i man i'm enjoying my life yes and then the fourth one now, now between 30 and, and 40. A bit uh, heavier now. I'm opening my eyes now. Mm. And it looks like, oh man, I made mistakes. Mm. But I still don't repair those mistakes because I don't have the knowledge. You don't close those holes. I don't have the knowledge. Where do I get the knowledge to do that stuff? Nobody's telling me you anything. Have time. And now the kid is growing. The kid is 10. Yeah. You know, the other day in a radio... Someone said, yo, my nice like a bond. <laughs> it's like a but it is true though, isn't it? Because it's a cost. It's whether, so expensive. Whether, whether we like it or not, yeah. it's a cost. Mm. Should we have them in our budget? That's the question. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can tell us <laughs> as, as someone hey, who's that's an expert. That's what is <laughs> Should we have the kids? It's like, my pula. <laughs> Seven thousand. <laughs> <laughs> we should. We should take care of our kids. We should have them in our budget. Yeah. You remember the other time when we had a chat, I was talking about the struggle of a, a typical black woman, yeah. mostly so a single woman. That's it. The absence of fathers. It's also absence of their money. It's also the absence of their money. Yeah. Um, even in the marriage, there's huh. what we call financial abuse. Cho -cho. It's just that it's not vocal. 
or entertained as much. There's Have a financial you seen it? abuse. Have you seen it? Financial abuse is when the the the, the provider or the spouse is not providing financially for the benefit of the household. Oh. You know. So it's not only about single mothers out there. Mm. It can also happen in a relationship, in a stable in a, in relationship. In a stable household. Including the ones with the lobola. It's stable. Uh, uh, um, uh, oh. So it's 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 like I mentioned in one of the examples in the book where one of the spouse is just spending money hmm. a, a higher percentage of their income outside the household needs. So it's it's deep. I think we should have been liberated financially as people in our minds. Uh, at the something that went wrong. I think one of the, the one of the greatest eras of our lives as humans, particularly us in South Africa, is that that was that was not there. And we were not taught money. And 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 imagine if you did this with kids from a very young age. Yes. They, imagine if you were to teach children from a very young age that residual is a bad idea. Exactly. Imagine if a six year old will tell you that no I will not do that. Go to the uncle. Uncle, did you buy your car with your residual? Imagine if a six year old asks you. And the uncle said, Why are you teaching your kids? <laughs> Imagine that level of empowerment. Yes. You're dealing with adults that are very different. Mm. If they start at that age to understand the budget. Lord. Do you budget, mommy? Yes, Lord, 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 Lord. Yo, but nah. How is it that we miss this? I, look, I'm not at, in primary. I'm not in high school. I don't know what they're teaching the children there. I wonder if this conversation is in the curricula. If I, it is, it's not at the level that it should. Yes. And when we have people like us, organizations like us, that are trying to break into this department. Yeah. There's so many red tapes. Yo, to just get the message in there. Just to get the message in there. Um, <laughs> we can create programs, programs and 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 apps and whatever. It's you know, it's all goes through those tendering issues and hey, and then it's another world that. on its own. Forget that problem. But there's an opportunity. We need those interventions from 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 what do they call it? Early development stage. Ah, that's okay. it. Yes. yes. From early development stage, because um, that's how we can only change the future of yes. a black man and a woman. Yes, <laughs> as they say, the curriculum needs to be shaken. Change the future. Financial literacy is key. Is key. Is the same. I'm sorry to divert a bit here. Mm. What also bothers me, King David, is the entrepreneurial world. Mm. The industry that is supporting entrepreneurs. I try by almost to knock on those opportunities and tell them, hey, mm. you are putting money behind this guy. Behind the jockey. <laughs> the jockey behind the business. But you're not helping him to manage his finances. Yeah. You put him money into his business, you're teaching him how to run the finances of the business. What about personal finance, finance. of the jockey behind the business? You it's, didn't divert. This is important. This this is Greek to them. I, you know, we, I'm trying for many years. I, I, I'm not giving up. Mm. I hope somewhere, somehow, I would be able to knock at the right doors and they will get it. Yeah. You are a financier, whether you are a bank or a um, enterprise development. This, 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 yeah. You need to bring financial, personal finance coaching. You need to bring personal finance coaching coaches into the programs of your business enterprise development you need to have if you are if you are any organization mm. that facilitate business finance personal finance must be one of the uh, due diligence absolutely before this person gets the money the 50 million <laughs> that 50 million they must go through financial coaching they must get their credit right they must do this some of these people don't 
entrepreneurs with great ideas and possibilities of turning around the industry cannot get that financial support because of the bad credit record. Yeah. So now, it's 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 help. not there. So you're saying that the help is not complete. They're helping this side. They're leaving the important they're leaving side. They're leaving this side. Because once he makes the money, he's going to blow it. He's going to buy the Range Rover yeah. before he even done his, yeah, before, his work. Yeah, before he plows back into the business. Before he even start with step one of the project. He already bought the Lerange Rover. Sure. <laughs> and then you come back and say, yeah, you know, small businesses, uh, statistics says um, they fail within the first or three years of their establishment, mm. including those who were assisted financially. And there's, there's, there's hundreds and hundreds of millions in development finance. It's lots of money. But if you're saying that money... They're, they're, they're betting on a on a horse that, that may not win the race because of other issues, not because the business idea is bad. Yes. It's because of other issues. Yes. And what's the point? So what they say is our mandate is about the business. Oh. You know. It's an incomplete mandate. What he does with, with his personal finance is this. We don't want to intervene. I said, you listen though. And uh, I'm saying this because... I used to be on the other side. Yeah. I graduated from three well-known enterprise development. Mm. Um, Shanduka Black Umbrellas, the Hope Factory, mm -hmm. and also the Sherry Blair is the international one where, yeah. you know, the, the the wife of the former U.S. president. Mm -hmm. uh, she's got a foundation where she picks uh, women in Africa to go under enterprise development, you know, business mentoring and stuff like that. Hmm. So I know what I, happens. I'm not speaking yeah. out of just mm. from the business point of view. I know what we get. Yeah. What entrepreneurs get. Hmm. And it's it's a big, big gap. I'm surprised they don't see the need for that. I probably need someone who can put a better proposal. <laughs> that would be a good proposal, right? <laughs> oh, we, uh, we bet I'll, I'll do the nitty gritty stuff and say, you, Mashabella, you go and you go and, you go and propose. Because it's sad. We, yeah, we, we bet our, our future on people who have a lifespan. Politicians have a lifespan. They expire. Politicians' value expires because of time in office. Time in office expires. I can you only have so much. Yes, and you want to. Whatever you do in that time, whether it's building a bridge or a flag or whatever it is that you're doing, yeah, uh, or getting uh, international community to invest in the country, yes. that becomes your thing. Yeah, and iman. <laughs> Yes. You see what I mean? Yes. This will see. It's not a priority. Right now, no. We are and that's the challenge that we, mm. we're having. Unfortunately, that's the reality that we have. And and I'm saying go down to the kids and teach them <laughs> residual. You're saying, well, the adults who are in business, teach them a thing or two about personal finance. Entrepreneurs. I want to I would be happy to see entrepreneurs support industry opening themselves, warming themselves up for personal finance. And I, I think for, 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 for very funny reasons, they think accounting mm. <laughs> is also covers. You know, the moment you say finance, no, 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 they already have accounting. finance yeah, they do training, book, book workshop, mm. and everything on finance. I said, no, 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 no. I'm not talking about accounting. Yeah, I'm talking about their money. I'm talking about their own money, yes. you know, their own, the money that goes into their own pocket. Even, you know, I'm thinking about uh, sportsmen and, and musicians. Sure, there's so many, there's so many crazy opportunities in your space. It almost, it, it almost sounds like it should be obvious, but it's not. Do you know, I had a, a, a guy here, a chere, he's an ex-offender, and he, he wants to empower young people and stop them from doing wrong because he had a decent life when he was growing up, but he, but he still became clever. Mm. And he's saying, I know why and I know how I, I ended up that way. Yes. And I know I can stop a lot of kids and their parents from having the same problem. But it's so difficult for him to get the attention of 
the right people. Do the wrong thing, you will <laughs> you'll get trend. The attention, you'll you will train. Great things they are not given. Ah. Or it's a longer process for them to be given an attention. And it's easy for you to give up and say, what are you born? Because I'm thinking, imagine if you stood in front of soccer players or whatever, sporting code. Yeah. And on a regular basis, they have this as part of when they, after they work out, there's that 20 minutes thing where they're going to sit down with someone. And it's not one-on-one. -on -one. You tell them as a group about budgeting and finance and all those questions that that that, that were, 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 were imposed to me at some point. Nice. Well, do you have insurance? Do you have this? And why do you need it? The residual, that car that you guys are driving, how did yes. you buy them? Do you think you've got an, a debt that you haven't paid for past three years? I can cancel it. A lot of and why do you have it? You know, why do I have it? Yes. Because the the showbiz industry does not necessarily come with stable no, income. No, never. It's a different Ooh. stake. Yeah. And those are the people who really, really, really need financial IQ. Because money is not guaranteed. Yes. Yeah. So um, we, 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 we would, I would appreciate to see more this industry opening up for yeah. these opportunities to empower the sportsmen, the artists, the, mm. the, 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 the creator of any sort. They call the it the gig industry. community. Yes. The gig economy. Yes, the gig economy. Those people. I wrote about gig economy in my book. Anyway. Yeah. So the, the, the gig economy, you know, we, we need industries to really hold the, yeah. the, 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 the creatives. I call them creatives because mm. I'm also a creative. Yes the creatives and the sportsmen of this country um, so that we, we should not just know them as people who are there, but then when when they pass on, it's a very sad story. Mm -hmm. It's a sad, sad story. It's a sad, sad story. Yo, a, a super, superstar died broke so and we, left nothing for the family. So we need to have that thing. We need to we need to call upon the decision makers to say what are you doing? Personal to, finance. Personal finance. Personal coaching. Debt expert. Where people know, Hore, when I have this, this is the person I need to talk to. I need mm. to talk to Kilebo Hele. I don't understand how to manage this thing. I need to coaching on these things. I need training. I need I need to be financially savvy. I need to imp up yeah. scale my financial IQ. It does not exist. And 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 as we conclude, man, it's not that difficult, eh? It's not. It's not. It's not like you're learning how to to uh, uh, build an electric car. No, <laughs> it's not that difficult. It doesn't even sakwa need sakwa qualification. Nothing. It's just maupeti hundred rand. <laughs> what do you need what do you need what do you need yes is it important yes. is it important yes how much am I left with oh, it's it's simple, simple budgeting stuff. and on a personal level okay this is your money bucket mm. this is how much you put in these are the holes that are in your money yes. bucket do something about this you can start here or these are potential holes before you these even get... These are potential get, holes. Yes. And if you don't close this hole, it's going to trigger all the other holes. <laughs> this one is underneath this bucket. You can't see it because of A, B, C, and D. Mm. That's now on a personal level. Yeah, ne, bon. I, I I got so much from this. You have no idea. Of I, course, isn't it? I, I probably have... Uh, my complexion is, is better. <laughs> uh, camera, my... Bright. I feel I feel bright. <laughs> like you know, if you've been to the toilet, it's like <laughs> Wow. Wow. Jeez, man, you deserve a lot of opportunities. You deserve to stand in front of a lot of people. What does what does your business do in, in simple terms? Like what do you do on a daily basis? You saw help people with their issues. Yes. But what else do you do? If I'm to just sum up with the first firstly with the individual services. Mm. Um it's debt cancellation like debt prescription. Yeah. Removing people out of debt review. Uh, preventing um, illegal reposition of cars and doing some negotiations around it. Mm. Black uh, credit repair or blacklisting clearance. Mm -hmm. Because I'm also an author, I also train people on how to become entrepreneur. Ah, okay. Yes. Like that. that sounds cool. I just did uh, a <laughs> training the other day 
Sure. It's another topic. Mm. <laughs> I think we need to talk about that. You seem to like it. You you yes. glow when you speak yes. of it. Yes. Uh, because there are so many creative authors here. They just don't know, know how to go about it. They don't know, know the platforms. Yeah. And be innovative about it mm. and, and get published. I can help people, authors, to write a book in 40 hours or less. <laughs> That's amazing. And then in terms of corporates, mm. um, it's employees or entrepreneurs programs. Mm. So we've got financial world, financial coaching on an app. You know, really? typical financial coaching is like you have to book with the Yeah, and sit down. And, and pay hourly rates. Yes, Very expensive. Over 1,000 rand or whatever. I decided to be innovative to mm. disrupt myself. <laughs> I said I must disrupt my I said people must disrupt themselves. So I've disrupted yes. myself on the book. I created an app, mm. financial coaching app. So it means when you go into my website, you click on the program that align with what you need, you tap, you pay, and it starts from like 350. Yeah. And 350 for like three days of coaching. Jeez. Not one hour. Mm, that's three days. <laughs> three days of coaching. Yeah. You tap, you do the coaching in your own space. Coca Marine. Your own leisure. Le leisure, mm. privacy. You know. And it's, is, it, is it on personal finance? It's on personal finance. You choose whether it's about debt, it's about life, uh, on or financial mm. coaching. We, we, are, we continue creating or yes. developing more so those are the coaches and I created that to to have a better end to the market other than the the monopolized way of doing financial training with the tenders yes. and then you have to go through these long contracts of uh, uh, financial wellness programs mm, or mm. you get the rejection that says no we already have EAP it's grand it's all we're so grand yeah. <laughs> mm. so mine is to say I don't you don't need that you just need to order that's it it's there yeah it's there it's three yeah. hours three days or five days you order if you've got 500 employees you right? order that you they, order they that I'll give, we give you discount you order that we, they get the code they just get access to this mm. coaching if you want a customized one we customized one three or five days or 14 days whichever they sign up you're good to go we deal with them coaching is better than training these days yeah coaching is exactly it's about you yeah, yeah. remember like I said when we're doing financial training, those HR managers will say, mm -mm. I don't do this. Because there's a whole lot of stigma about financial wellness training. That we're what are you we are damaged? Yeah. Eh? We can't be stig we have stigma about so I realize, finance. Eh? I realize that the market needs privacy uh. as much. But within <laughs> that, let me give you a coaching that you can access anytime. You don't have to compare diary with me. No, that's that's it. You just go to the pay, get to the app, do your coaching. And then if you need anything else, then you can contact us. Let's deal with your credit repair, car repossession, cancelling of debt, and, and, and. How has the uptake been for your product? Are, are there people? Um, not as much as I would love to. Yeah. Um, because most of the coaching is also based on the book. So okay. It's it's a money bucket holds coaching. Yeah. They go hand in hand, and also part of the upcoming book, uh, upcoming books. So I, the, the take in has not been mm. bad, but I think I'm moving to the right direction. Yeah. Because companies are trying to do away with the long term contracts that are not fruitful, that are repetition, that are boring with low attendance of workshops of staff, that yeah. are reactive. Yes, yeah, like any employee, you need to have financial crisis and try to commit suicide before the EAP. Or they or they or they notice in the company that Gunama Ganish I fifty in this yes. campaign. Yes. Clearly there's a problem and, yes. and that's affecting productivity of these employees yes. of ours. And they can't have a specialized expert because they've contracted themselves to the employee assistant program that claims sorry, to be solving this. Solving this. And they're only reactive. 
Oh. Remember, they would charge 20 rand per employee per month for about three years or so. Mm. But they are only going to service what per month? 10%. Of course. Of your employees. Yeah. And in a reactive based on the incoming. That Whatever that's getting them to think oh, there's yes. a problem. Yes. So the whole lot of money, you may think you are paying less mm. per employee per month. But you literally not put in value. No, not at all. Yes. So the program that I put together is instant access anytime proactive, impactful, convenient, affordable. Get her book. So I'll tell you. You know, we keep talking about our books that belong to people who live in America. <laughs> yeah, we just start documenting our. Our, our stories, we our should. knowledge. Um, that's why I'm passionate about training authors in South Africa to write books. Iri, Iri, money bucket holes explained. Yes. I think you should get it. I really think you should get it. Ah, I know changes the pillow back. Yes, I <laughs> don't even realize this was longer than we had intended, but it was for a good cause. It is definitely, definitely. She, she probably knows more. Nafon naging agadi taola ya cheleta how. Remalasi, remalasi. Kumalos ya cheleta how. This is where you need to. Remalasi, I agree. Because, 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 I can mention all these things, but I realize I can sum them up as naging agadi taola cheleta how, so you don't make mistakes. It's an award-winning book. This one, award-winning author. Let me capture it right. It's also a, a well author of this book. It's a beautiful book. Finance financial and credit repair coach, dead expert, founder of Good Life Money Mastery. Get her book. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. What is it? Let's do this again soon. Let's do it again soon. Yes, why not? Let's do it again. What do you why want to talk? Oh, we said, we said, yes, we have an appointment. Yes. Next time we talk about a uh, credit uh, uh, can debt counseling. Debt counseling, I would like you to. You said it's a, it's a big world. It's a big topic it's a big thing there's been so many companies but dead cancelers sure. everywhere it's i've learned they sense. advertise on my show as well i have two that advertise on my show yes. and i see they keep coming they keep coming so clearly there's something happening there and you say there's also scams in that space a lot of scams Cho -cho. it pains my heart a lot of scams around it comes. but they're also good companies that are helping people yes it's just like any other industries you know we we have good and bad attorneys. We you know. Yeah, there'll always be a rotten potato there and there. Yeah. Some are even not dead counselors, but they're representing themselves as dead counselors because you have to get you have to be certified by National Credit Regulator yes. to be a dead counselor. You don't just become. Yes. Hmm. It's a very um, tough, tough, um, a very sensitive matter mm. to 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 talk about but i love educating people about it i think even on my website um i i, I break it down on what debt counseling is mm. yeah I, I don't know if i should mention my website no please please i want you to mention our website mention it twice twice yes it's or three times. very easy we'll write it on on this on this uh, uh, what you call it on this episode yes. as well is www ilebukhile.me dot me as in how 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 uncomplicated yes, is that so www.kilebukhile.me yes me and my finance yes <laughs> instagram is credit repair coach underscore kilebukhile mm. facebook is at kilebukhile books we, we also building uh developing the company ah, that, yes. for good life money mastery uh, LinkedIn is Kilewahile Moketi. So, yeah. Kimo Oketi. Waho, yes. Ote Pedi. Otswana Likulu Yin. Thank you so much, man. Thank you so much. This has been so educational for me. I enjoyed every minute of it. I enjoy your company. You are such a blessing. You've got a beautiful soul. Thank you. And, um, 
you made it even more interesting and easier for me to really enjoy myself. <laughs> Keep doing what you're doing. Yes, I will, I'll try. It's not always easy. You when I was when I was about to buy a wait. Yeah, I don't you know. worry. If subdued, they won't come. Let me tell you who's coming next in my dreams. Uh, Jacob Zuma, former president of this country. Hey. Um, uh, who else? Yeah, imagine, imagine the president sitting there. <laughs> yeah. Breaking the whole thing down. Yeah. Yo, yo, yo. I don't uh, want to miss that. No, it'd be amazing. Uh, imagine if I had. Uh, uh, price. <laughs> 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 this roof was gonna be lit. Imagine that. Imagine if I had a uh, uh, bratibos big. Yo yo yo. I, I disrespected him. I apologize. <laughs> uh, imagine if I had former president Tabo Big. Yeah. I, I have those 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 dreams as well. I know they're politicians, but they are they are those that are really difficult to get hold of. You are. And we keep trying. Imagine if I had Pizzo Musimani here. Okay, I'm dreaming. <laughs> this is me dreaming now. Kakasa <laughs> coach. <laughs> and look, the list is so, so long. Yes. For Lillian Dube, the list is long. You see He's doing Asani. I wish I could sit down with him and we talk because he's so passionate about education and everything like that. Exactly. Wow, man. Anyway, that's me. Now you know my dreams. <laughs> yes, what you dream about and what makes you fall off the bed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Take you care. so much. It's been an honor. Thank you. Hey, okay. see you, everybody. King King David Studio Podcast.